Welcome to the Institute of All Intelligent Life. My name is Alan Kiesler, and we are continuing our class on extraterrestrial spirituality. We are going to move into a new phase of this class today. The last couple of sessions we've been exploring how the concept of God developed on this planet over the last several thousand years in different places how the concept of one God specifically developed. And now we're going to move to exploring extraterrestrial concepts of God, or of divinity, or of the Creator, or of the One, the Infinite. And also we're going to talk about the process by which that One becomes many, you can say, or the process by which the Creator uh, brings about creation. And um, this is going to come from several sources. Uh, I won't go into details footnoting each comment I make and which source it's coming from, but more this will be coming from the Law of One books. The Law of One is evidently an extraterrestrial source, that's what it claims to be anyway. And uh, so we're going to just proceed to look at how this group of extraterrestrials and some other groups claiming at least to be extraterrestrials who have manifested their knowledge on this planet, uh, how they compare with each other. And I'm actually not going to go into details of how they are different from each other, but I'm going to focus on trying to put together several of them and trying to understand some very fundamental concepts about divinity that we have found, that I have found in this study of extraterrestrial sources on their concepts of divinity. So I've taken a bunch of notes here and I'm just going to try to go through these and uh, give you some idea of the conclusions that I have reached as a result of studying several different extraterrestrial sources. And I will bring in a little bit also, of course, of the concepts, which we may say they're extraterrestrial also. They come from sources beyond this planet. That is the concepts in uh, revealed religion. Revealed means it comes from God or from an extraterrestrial source. All right, so in the beginning, now let me explain. In the beginning does not mean in time, in the beginning in time, because it's pretty universal, pretty universally understood. Even on this planet, many, many people understand that there is no creation uh, in time of the original realities. In other words, we sometimes say God created on the first day or whatever, but really it, it is an eternal creation. In other words, God is eternal and what we're going to be talking about today, uh, the first principles of reality, which are before what we usually call creation, but there is not a single unity only before creation. All of this happens in a timeless state. That is, it doesn't happen one thing after the other within time. This all happens before time, but because we exist within time, we sort of think in time, so we think that things have to happen in time. Um, so I'm just going to explain how the one starts becoming more than one. And again, I repeat, this is not that it happens one becoming more than one within time. This is all happening outside of time or before time. Okay, so first, and this is, as I've said many times, both in this course and in previous courses I've taught on extraterrestrial uh, life, everywhere, as far as I know, uh, everywhere people understand there is one original source of everything. 
whether it is called God or the Creator or the Source, um, the term that is used most frequently in the Law of One books is uh, intelligent infinity or Creator. In other words, it's a description of Creator or a description of the One, description of the Source of everything, which includes both the idea that it must be infinite, which I think practically everyone will agree that has any sort of sense of understanding divinity, that the original source of everything is infinite, and which some people may dispute, but which I have no difficulty at all with, that original source of everything is intelligent, meaning it's conscious. All right, so that's the very first fundamental principle. And as I explained in the last couple of classes, uh, we saw progressing on this planet over the last few millennia, 4,000 years, 5,000 years, 6,000 years. It's not clear exactly when this progression started that we've been talking about, um, but certainly it's at least four or 5,000 years. Um, at that time, there were a lot of people who worshipped different gods and those different tribes or those different city-states each had their own god and each felt that their deity was at least the most important one for them and other people had important gods for themselves. But uh, gradually uh, some prophets and some seers, some extraterrestrial sources gave the information that there's only one but it took thousands of years for humanity as a whole to come to this understanding that there is only one source of everything, there's only one ultimate creator, only one ultimate God. But that gradually became established and finally it became the whole basis of the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the one is the fundamental. There aren't many original sources. There's only one. And that I think is pretty much accepted even by atheists and by scientists who uh, don't talk about God at all. They, If they reflect they can say that if there is a source of everything it would only be one. There can only be one original source of everything. So that uh, is the first reality, the ultimate reality. And usually it's described and understood that that one reality includes everything, that nothing is separate within that concept of the one because it is infinite, therefore it includes everything. Okay, that's the first step, you might say, although again it's not steps one after the other in terms of time, but it's more uh, steps in terms of philosophical understanding of ours. Uh, we can first understand philosophically that there was one original source of everything. Now how did that gradually, not gradually in time, but gradually in terms of our philosophical understanding, how did that become more than one? So the next step, you can say, not in time, but in philosophical understanding, I'm stressing that again and again, we're not talking about progression in time, but the next step is the existence of free will on the part of the One. That is, we imagine or we consider or we philosophically conceive of the idea of the One Infinite Source existing alone, uh, but then there is the awareness that that One has uh, the freedom free will of the one and this is the second stage you can say. The first stage is just the oneness existing in its oneness and the second stage is when that oneness uh, becomes aware or you can say um, the one begins its exploration of manyness. Of course again I say begins, we're not talking about in time. But that's the second concept or the second aspect of understanding divinity. First there's just the one 
and then there's the awareness of the one of the possibility of manyness or the expl exploration when the one uh, explores the fact that that one infinite also has many many or an infinite infinite number you can say of aspects or parts that is the second step or the second stage again not in time so free will the freedom of will the free uh, freeness to be aware and to think about you can say manyness that is the second stage of divinity and uh, another way of describing it is to say that the creator or the original source knows itself um, again I'm using the word it uh, I could use the word him I could use the word her uh, it is not a gender concept but it is a concept of an intelligent uh, infinity so because intelligence and personality are very closely related and we think persons in terms of gender therefore it's hard for us when we use the word it uh, not to think of something impersonal so I use the word it because I don't want to uh, uh, ascribe a gender to the one or to the creator but it is a person that is it is a personality it is a consciousness awareness so uh, the creator knowing itself becoming aware of itself and becoming aware of the existence of other selves besides itself that is the second stage of divinity and um, there's one more phrase I'm going to quote this from the law of one series intelligent infinity perceived the concept of finity so that's another way of saying uh, the one explores manyness the beginning of the exploration of manyness again I want to repeat beginning does not mean in time this all exists eternally okay but that's the second stage or the second aspect maybe it's a better word of divinity first the one existing in itself Two, the one being aware of the many or the at least we would have to maybe say of the concept of many or the possibility of many because we are using time uh, as the framework in which we're describing this pro progress um, but of course it's not the beginning and the next step and the next step this all I want to stress this again and again and again uh, this all exists eternally so the the one is always aware of the many but in terms of our concepts of understanding the one we philosophically or abstractly imagine the one existing by itself because that's the one in itself but the one also includes everything else but we're imagining in the one step where the one has no awareness of the many but the second stage is when the one becomes aware at least of the possibility of the many if we don't want to ascribe existence yet to the many all right now this is very very interesting uh, subject matter the third step after creation uh, excuse me after the creator knows itself the next step is what we may call um, the creative principle or we may be, we may call God <laughs> it's, it's a different meaning of God than the one uh, it means the logos is another word that's used love not love with a small L but love with a capital L God is love when we use that phrase God is love we may be talking about this aspect of divinity the third aspect where after free will has come into action 
uh, the result of that free will is the uh, existence of energy, uh, infinite energy. Again, energy is not what we think of as energy with a small e, but a capital E. Again, that energy is infinite. That energy is intelligent. So we have number three, infinite, intelligent energy, um, love with a capital L, logos is a word used from Greek, from Greek philosophy. Um, that means uh, the creative principle. Now, now the fourth step is a little confusing. In fact, the third is confusing also because uh, there is the original logos and there are other logoi. Logoi. Logoi is the plural of logos. Logos means word. Uh, it's used in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Injil. Uh, the logos, the word, was with God in the beginning. So, of course, in Christian theology, Jesus Christ is identified with that logos. That is not actually the conclusion of all in, of all different extraterrestrial groups. Um, the ones that I'm familiar with, they may revere Jesus, who appeared on this planet as a human being, as one of the co-creators, and I'm going to come to this in just a minute, um, but generally not as the primal uh, logos. So that may be a difference of orthodox Christian theology with extraterrestrial theology, you might say. Um, and in any case, uh, what's very important to understand is that creation, as we experience creation, uh, is not directly done by the original one source. Uh, but rather, each universe, because extraterrestrials seem to be more aware than we are that there are many universes, uh, they may have different definition of the word universe, but in any case, each universe has a creator. So the original of everything, the one, the original source, we do use the word creator because it's the original source of all creation, but actually universes are created by uh, sub-creators, you might say, co-creators, uh, universal creators, you might say, who are creators of universes. So this fourth stage I'm going to describe, um, it's in the process. That's the interesting characteristic of this fourth stage of divinity, you might say, or reality. It's creation. Um, now creation, when I use the word creation, again, it's like using the word love with a capital L, uh, using the word Logos with a capital L. Uh, creation here, uh, we can use the word light for it uh, because all creation comes from light. But this light, again, is not the light that we see with our eyes, but is with a capital L. It is the uh, vibration, you might say, um, of creation, of original creation. And the co-creators are um, creating using intelligent infinity, using the, uh, the, the power of the original uh, source, the original one, the original unity, the original oneness. It's using it, the co-creators each create a universe. And What's very, very interesting here is that each one of these co-creators has complete free will within their universes. I'm going to pause a second to think about this, reflect on this. Uh, of course, we have already described free will as the first uh, stage of divinity after 
the oneness. Uh, so the oneness becomes aware of others, uh, becomes uh, active in terms of having free will, and similarly the co-creators who create their universes, they each uh, utilize their own free will. Uh, that free will, of course, comes from the original source, so it's not their own in that sense that they've created it, but it's their own free will. That is, they have total freedom to do whatever they want within their universes. And now, uh, for the sake of Christians who may have been offended by my first uh, statement that the original Logos, the primal creator, um, again, not the one, I'm talking about the result of the one utilizing free will, uh, the, the third sta stage of divinity, that primal logos, I said I do not identify, and I believe extraterrestrials do not identify that with Jesus. But, again, this is, uh, I don't know if this is mentioned in the law of one, I don't think it is, and therefore we can put some question on it if we want. But other sources, such as the Urantia book, which I had been using mostly for the last two classes, the Urantia book does identify the co-creator of our universe, the logos of our universe, with Jesus of Nazareth. So maybe that will be some consolation to Christians who feel that their uh, Jesus Christ has been demoted <laughs> if he's not identified with the original primal uh, logos, the original uh, capital L love, which really is divinity. But the co-creators are also divinity. They're just another phase, you can say, of divinity. So, um, again, I, I, I sort of have to take a step back when I say something like that, because uh, we don't want to lose this realization, which as I explained in the last couple of classes, took thousands of years for humanity to get firmly established in. That is from the time of Abraham, the time of Melchizedek, I should say Abraham's teacher, uh, when polytheism was quite widespread. Uh, it took, for, it took uh, 1,500 years maybe, or bring it to the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, 2,500 years from the time of Abraham, uh, it took to really firmly establish monotheism, or the understanding that the ultimate God really is only one. So we don't want to lose that awareness of the oneness of divinity when we start talking about the expansion of divinity or the development of divinity. Again, not in time, but God uh, is one, but at the same time, God exists in maybe different phases, we should say. The first phase where there's beyond any awareness, any thought of manyness, then awareness, free will, choice, you can say, to explore manyness, and third, the logos, or infinite energy. Um, and then the fourth stage, which is what we're describing now, is light, with a capital L, creation, um, in which there are an infinite number. Uh, I, I, I think that's correct to say there are an infinite number of co-creators, but uh, speaking from within the framework of time, we can say maybe they haven't all uh, come into existence yet. Uh, because it appears from our perspective that certainly because the one is infinite, is intelligent infinity, therefore there must be an infinite number of universes, an infinite number of co-creators. Um, but from within the perspective of time, they may not have all been manifested yet. Because um, if God is infinite, then time can also 
not be said to be finite. Time must be infinite. So if time is infinite, from within the perspective of time, there must always be more and more and more co-creators coming into existence. That's maybe sort of a contradiction, uh, because that's the perspective from within time. Uh, but of course, that's only our perspective, which in a sense is sort of an illusion. Time, as we think of it, as I've explained previously several times, as well as in an article uh, on my website, which says that uh, time, as we think of it, is sort of an illusion. It's a... Uh, this, is, this is hard for us. It's really hard for us because uh, it's not the way we've been trained. It's not the way we've been taught. And it's not the way we experience existence. We experience time. Um, but that's our experience. So I'm struggling with this uh, idea of the infinitude of God and the infinitude of God's creation, therefore. If God is infinite, God's creation must be infinite. And the infinitude of co-creators. Uh, and if we're within time, because God is infinite, time must be infinite. More and more things must be happening that hadn't happened before, because we're in time, we think that way. So yes, this is the conclusion we would have to come to, that more and more universes are being created infinitely, I guess. Although there is another concept, when, and this is uh, one thing I'll tell you frankly, I've been struggling to understand this. Um, just like in modern science, modern cosmology, modern astrophysics, discussion is if, if the universe is expanding, or if the universe is uh, expanding and contracting. Um, so I'm just going to go on, a, go on to a few more points, and I see already there are a lot of creators, uh, excuse me, a lot of questions about the different creators and the different uh, concepts I've already talked about. But um, I just want to say one or two more things about the co-creators, which are very, very interesting from our perspective, especially those of us who have been trained in science. Some of these things may be very fascinating. Uh, one, I've already said, each co-creator has full freedom, full freedom to do what he or she or they or it, whatever pronoun you want to use, uh, to do whatever they want. And that includes they decide what will be the natural laws of their universe. That is, each co-creator has a different set of fundamental laws. So that's a very interesting, interesting idea also. And um, actually there's a lot more. I've written, written some more notes on uh, galaxies and each star or each solar system also has a sort of co-creator, you might say, who has the freedom to generate the laws, sub-laws, you can say, because it must be within the framework of the laws of the universal creator, but there can be uh, sub-creators uh, who have sub-laws, and they have a certain freedom to, within the framework of the laws of the higher co-creator, higher level co-creator, they have freedom to generate certain laws within their solar system, you could say. All right, so I think we'll end there. Uh, these are some very challenging ideas, perhaps, to some of us, but um, we need to explore. We need to understand these ideas. We need to understand, first of all, that we are very limited. Our awareness is very limited. We are very tiny. We are human beings, seven billion human beings, that's a lot of people, <laughs> and but that's only on one little planet. So we shouldn't think that we have such a good understanding of everything. Uh, that's the whole point of this course, really. In fact, that's the whole point of the Institute of All Intelligent Life, in one sense, is to help us realize that we're not so uh, great as we may have thought we were. And we can benefit from knowledge from extraterrestrial sources, of course, we have to always take it with a grain of salt because extraterrestrials can be deceitful too. It does happen. It has happened. Um, but we are doing our best to take the best intelligent uh, 
sources that we can get from, uh, from extraterrestrial sources, look at them together, and see what sort of conclusions we come to. All right, so this is going to be an interesting discussion, I can see already, from some of the questions that have come up. So, oops, let's see if I can get back to the beginning here. Okay. Uh -huh. A lot of highs and hellos and other comments that aren't questions relating to this course. Okay, here, Joseph Sadek, God is love, First John. Okay, now this brings up a very, very important point. Um, when we say God is love, of course, that's true. I have no doubt that that's true. It's in the Bible, uh, the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Um, and I described that love, with a capital L, is the word that's used for the third aspect of divinity. Because the one creator is beyond everything, includes everything. So to describe the one source of everything as love would be limiting it. Uh, but the third aspect of divinity is uh, it's infinite in one sense, but in another sense it's not. So it can be described as love. So yes, uh, God is love, and that love is the Logos. That love is the infinite energy as opposed to the uh, intelligent infinity or the infinite intelligence. So there is infinite intelligence or intelligent infinity, and there is a separate aspect, maybe is the best word, of divinity, which is infinite energy. And that is love. Because love means energy. Love means activity. If somebody loves, they are active. So in the sense we're using these terms now, the original one is in a state of inactivity, you might say. Or pre-activity, maybe a better word. So this is, again, I'm saying, these. this is sort of stretching our concepts a little bit, but uh, I think there's a great benefit in doing this. All right, so Ali Gilani is asking, did co-creators create by the Supreme Creator? Or what does that mean, the Supreme Creator became aware of co-creators? Very good questions. The first question, did co-creators create by the Supreme Creator? Yes. Uh, in fact, I used that phrase, and I can look at my notes, and that the co-creators each created a universe using intelligent infinity. So they create by the Supreme Creator, yes. It is the Supreme Creator who is creating through them, you could say. Um, or what does that mean, the Supreme Creator became aware of co-creators? Okay, like, again, don't misunderstand. Became aware of doesn't mean that at one time he wasn't aware and then he became aware. No, he was always aware. But we're just describing the stages or the phases of divinity. So, yes, the Supreme Creator definitely was always aware of the co-creators. But in one sense, we're abstracting this, we're philosophically analyzing this. In one sense, that original divinity is beyond any activity, beyond any awareness, you might say, outside of itself anyway. And... It's oneness, infinite oneness, before manyness, or outside of manyness. Although many, it's no, there was no such thing as a time before manyness. But we're again, philosophical uh, analysis, <laughs> only theoretical, because we're within time, so we're using terminology like this. But please don't misunderstand when you ask, the Supreme Creator became aware of co-creators? Does that mean that before that he wasn't aware? No, the C Supreme Creator was always aware the co-creators. Okay, I hope that answers that. Um, Joseph Sadek, extraterrestrials are fallen angels, don't be deceived. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm sorry to say you're wrong. Uh, some of the extraterrestrials are fallen angels, yes. Uh, those who are called fallen angels, um, they came from off this planet, and some of them came to this planet. Others exist elsewhere in other dimensions or on other planets. 
Uh, but it's very, <laughs> I'm surprised that you could make such a statement, extraterrestrial are fallen angels, don't be deceived. You're wrong, I'm sorry. You don't know what extraterrestrials are. Have you met them? I have met extraterrestrials who are not fallen angels. Yes, some extraterrestrials are the fallen angels. Other extraterrestrials are angels. Gabriel, Michael, all the great angels that we read about in the scriptures, including the Bible, they're not uh, fallen angels. They're the real unfallen angels. And they're extraterrestrials. They're not from this planet. So all extraterrestrials are not fallen angels. Sorry, your statement is wrong. And I have met extraterrestrials who are not fallen angels. They're very uh, angelic. Rafael Latif, what can be the requirement function of co-creators when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Almighty Infinite? Hmm, very good question. Um, okay, here's the answer. There are, God is infinite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the infinite, the one. Because God is infinite, there are an infinite number of universes. Because of the infinite nature of God, each one of those infinite universes is different from the others. It has different laws according to the free will choice of the sub-creator of that universe. So, yes, Allah is the Almighty, the infinite, but He Himself again I'm using now the masculine pronoun which I probably should not but Allah uh, the original almighty infinite is not the creator of the universes he is the original creator of everything he is the creator of the creators of the universes now you may not like that idea because that hasn't fit into your terminology or your understanding before uh, but our understanding is limited and that's why if we take advantage of extraterrestrial sources who actually they have more experience than we do our experience is very limited our experience of history is very limited our experience of divinity is very limited our experience of space is extremely limited we only know about our one planet and we can see the stars and hardly know anything about them gradually we may be learning more but we are learning that there are you know that our idea about the universe that we had a hundred or two hundred years ago especially was totally like playing in our own backyard only. Uh, there are millions and billions of galaxies, each galaxy having millions or billions of stars. So uh, we can benefit from taking information from sources that are more aware about the reality of the universe and reality of the process of creation than we have been. And we shouldn't be so attached to our scriptures, whether it's the Holy Quran, the Holy Bible, or any other book. Uh, we should not be so attached to thinking that everything is totally present in it because it's not. It's not. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not. There is uh, much more information available than could be included within any, any one book uh, that we have on our planet. So it, it's a simplified message. In other words, in order to clearly establish that the infinite, the Almighty, is one, it's not a plethora of gods, there's not many gods, there's only one God, that was stressed that God is the creator of everything. But when we understand there are many, many universes, then we can understand each universe can have its own creator, and each of those creators can be a servant of the one original source, the one original infinite almighty creator, original creator with a capital C. All right, again I'm saying this is going to be controversial, I know. Rafael Latif, sir, what brings you to the idea of co-creators, extraterrestrial sources of information? Uh, they know about the fact that there are many, many universes, and they know that each universe 
has different natural laws than the other universe, other universes, and that each universe is governed by, created by, and governed by a different co-creator, a different um, logos. I know this idea is not present in most Muslims' understanding of the Quran. I would suggest that it probably is there, uh, but it was not presented in such a way that we can understand it now, because people at that time, it was beyond their uh, scope of thought. They needed to understand there's only one God. And after understanding there's only one God, then, only then, could the idea that each universe has its own creator be established and accepted without becoming a polytheistic system. All right, again, we're struggling. This is a difficult issue. Um, Ali Gilani again, I guess these co-creators are, quote, chosen ones from the supreme creators as described in Quran. What do you say? Oh, maybe so. I didn't know. I, I did say that I'm sure this information is present there in the Quran, but maybe has not been understood, but maybe you have understood it from the Quran already. I didn't, I myself have not studied the Quran all that much, but uh, yes, they're, they, uh, this is possible. It, I would guess that this is inform this information is there uh, in the Quran. Thank you very much. So my answer would be yes, probably anyway. Sayyid Aziz Rahman, have you written any book or planning to write any book on Sufism? I have not written any book on Sufism, no. Uh, I don't know if I will. I don't have any plans right now. Uh, Joseph Sadiq, but I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. You know, you're very, very puffed up. Excuse me, Joseph. You're very arrogant. You think that you understand everything. You think that you understand that uh, because Satan describes, dis can disguise himself as an angel of light, therefore... Uh, all extraterrestrials must be fallen angels. I think that's where you're insinuating by your statement. No, you're wrong. Forgive me. <laughs> I'm not being puffed up in making that statement. I know this uh, from personal experience, from study, from spiritual uh, meditation. Um, so we can meet someday, perhaps, and discuss these things in more details. But um, please do not be so or arrogant as to think that you understand that all extraterrestrials must be fallen angels. No. Don't say, oh, I'm not surprised, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, so uh, their so-called extraterrestrials who are angelic, they must be Satan in disguise. No, please do not think that way. That will mislead you. Be open to the possibility that there are real angels, and they are not fallen, and they are meeting human beings. So that's all I can say. Arsalan Khizar says, is there the creator of co-creators? Yes. That, in fact, when I began this class, I used the word creator, with a capital C, as the one of the names that's used for the original source, the original uh, infinite intelligence or intelligent infinity, the one. Uh, yes, so that creator is the original creator, and all the universal creators, co-creators, sub-creators, you might say, they are sub-creators of the one original creator. Yes, Joseph Sadek, it's Bible quote, not me. But you're interpreting the Bible quote. You are s insinuating that just because Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, I agree with you, I'm not disagreeing with that fact. All I'm disagreeing with is your interpretation that therefore extraterrestrials must be fallen angels. No, that is not the statement of scripture. That's your interpretation of it. Okay, Joseph Sadek is saying, I know there are real angels as well. Please don't get misunderstood. Uh, I know if there was a Bible, there was Bible quote. Okay, so I think we agree then. There are real angels and there are fallen angels. There are good extraterrestrials, angelic extraterrestrials, and there are bad extraterrestrials, satanic extraterrestrials, just like there are good human beings and there are bad human beings. It's the same with extraterrestrials. So, thank you. I'm glad that we 
I believe, have come to an agreement and understanding on this point. Okay, Ali Gilani. Satan identified as jinn in Quran. He had promoted to angels ranks, but Satan was not angel as described in Quran. All right, this may be a difference between the Bible and the Quran. In the Bible, usually Satan is considered a fallen angel. You were saying, according to the Quran, Satan is uh, identified as a jinn. That may be a detail that uh, isn't such a major issue. I'm sure that that can be resolved without any problem. But uh, whatever he was or is, a jinn or an angel or a fallen angel, uh, Satan definitely is the enemy of humanity. Satan definitely is a deceiver. Satan definitely is disguises himself as an angel of light. I think we will all agree on that. Okay, Joseph Sadek says, agree. Thank you very much. I'm glad we have confirmed our agreement. Okay, and Ali Gilani, thanks you, sir, for sharing such great information. Okay, I think uh, we can end soon. Okay, I've just seen another comment here by Rafia Latif. Sir, if we start from our own planet, every human being is a co-creator with a free will. Yes, very good point. That's very true. Uh, all the scientific advancements done by human is an evidence. What do you say? Yes, we are all co-creators, definitely. We have a creative power given to us by God. Uh, in fact, in the Quran, it describes human beings as, um, somebody can correct me. Uh, anyway, I can't remember the Arabic right now, but the best of creation, I think. Um, so, Ashraf Makluk or something. Um, yes, so human beings are also co-creators. We have free will. Yes. Very good point. Okay, thank you all very, very much. We're going to be pursuing this uh, same topic, as I indicated. This is only the first class in this description of extraterrestrial concepts of divinity and of creation. And we'll be continuing this discussion in the next class which will be uh, on Monday evening at 7 p.m. in California time, Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. Pakistan time. Thank you all very much. Peace be with you.